Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of StriveScan, my name is Jeff. I want to welcome you this evening to our Tennessee Virtual College Fair. We will be hearing from five institutions this evening, uh, Iowa State University, Drake University, St. Louis University, Missouri Southern State University, and Missouri University of Science and Technology. As a reminder, all attendees, your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. You can ask questions at any time of the representatives through the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, without further ado, I will turn it over to Raphael with Iowa State University. Thank you, Jeff. Awesome, good, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Like Jeff mentioned, we do have six minutes. It's gonna go pretty quickly. So if at any point you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the Q&A. My name is Rafael Mendoza Nunez. I am one of the regional admissions counselors for Iowa State University. And I will be talking to you about Iowa State and what we have to offer. First off, let's talk about where Iowa State is. We are located in a small town called Ames, total population of about 60, 65,000 people. Out of those 60, 65, we, uh, 30,000 are college students. So pretty much cut in half, it is a college town. We are about 45 minutes north of Des Moines and about a 10 and a half, 11 hour drive from Nashville, Tennessee. So that way y'all can kind of get an idea of where we are located. Why Iowa State? What do we have to offer? So first off, we have hundreds of different study abroad opportunities for all of our students. We want to make sure that our students have a wide variety of different knowledges and just experiences where they're able to kind of just learn off of each other and learn from different cultures. For those of you that are looking into smaller schools because you want to make sure that you have that communication with your professors, with your instructors, we do have a 19 to one student to faculty ratio. That's huge with us being among the, the largest university in the state of Iowa. So being able to have that communication is still at Iowa State. We do also have over 900 clubs and organizations. If we don't have what you're looking for, we make it very easy for you to go ahead and make your own club or organization. Within those 900 clubs and organizations, they operate from social clubs, academic clubs, multicultural clubs, religious clubs, kind of a wide variety of different options. And for, the, for those of you that are into sports, we are part of the Big 12 Con Conference NCAA Division I. At Iowa State, we do have six different academic colleges the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Ivy College of Business, College of Design, College of Engineering, College of Human Sciences, and the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Within these six different academic departments, we are able to offer over 100 different majors on campus. I, why Iowa State? What, other than that, what else do we have to offer? For those of you that are interested in vet school, Iowa State was the first public school in the nation to have a vet school. For those of you that are interested in law school, we do have a special program called the three, three plus three program where you're able to earn both your bachelor's degree and your law degree in six years instead of seven, getting rid of that final last year of financial responsibility with law school. We do know that can get a little pricey. And for those of you that are interested in research, we have over 100 different research labs on campus and they completely vary from hard sciences like chemistry, biology, things like that, or more of the social sciences through sociology, psychology, criminal justice, through those type of majors. One of the biggest things that we are proud of at Iowa State is that 96% of our students that graduate from Iowa State tend to have a job offer or get into a graduate program six months after graduating. Another huge thing that we're definitely proud of at Iowa State is that we are among the top 25 most beautiful campuses in the nation. When you come to campus, if you do get the chance to visit, we are doing in-person visits. You just have to make sure that you register for those ahead of time. When you walk through campus, it feels like you're walking through a park. The architect that designed our campus is the same architect that designed Central Park in New York. So unfortunately, when I, when I don't get to go to Iowa State occasionally, I try to kind of just imagine myself on campus and use it to kind of relax because it is definitely a beautiful experience. Now let's talk about out-of-state tuition. We are looking at an out-of-state tuition of $24,508. 
Apart from that, we also have room and board, which is 9,149. We do not require our freshmen to live on campus. Although 95% of our students decide to live on campus to make sure they get that full freshman experience. And then here are a few other estimated fees that our, our students usually go through. But even then, even if we're talking about just tuition and room and board, that's, we're still looking at about $32,000. How are we gonna go ahead and pay for that? These right here are automatic award scholarships that we that our Tennessee students would go ahead and qualify for automatically if they do meet these requirements. Some of these do, it, it does look a little bit confusing since you can see some of them have SAT or ACT requirements, but we are test optional for this year and for next year. So if you meet the GPA requirements, you would go through an individual review process. So how does our admissions process work? We have two different paths. Our first path would be for students who do have SAT or ACT, tests, they would go through the RAI formula. We look at the GPA, SAT or ACT scores, as well as the amount of core courses, such as English, math, science, courses like that. If you go through that path, if you get a 245 or higher with that score, you would automatically be admitted into Iowa State. If you don't have scores or aren't too comfortable submitting your scores because you feel like you didn't do your best, you would go ahead and go through an individual academic review process. That would, end, that would strongly go off of your high school GPA and the amount of core courses that you have taken. Here is a list of our social media pages. I highly encourage you all to check us out, specifically on Instagram. Lately, we've been doing a lot of social media takeovers by a lot of our students. So you're kind of able to see what the day in the life of a college student is like and ask our students specific questions and see how they're liking Iowa State and their experience. We also have a, a Facebook page for our parents to make sure that they stay in contact with each other and making sure that they are all connected. Here is my personal contact information. If y'all have any questions at any point, I know I threw a lot of, a lot of information at y'all. Please feel free to go ahead and contact me. Contact me. Thank you. Thanks, Raphael. Appreciate that. Next up, we have Drake University. Hi everybody, can you hear me all right? I hope so. My name is Megan Rush and I work at Drake University. Um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen right now. Thank you all. Oh, zero attendees. <laughs> Thank you other panelists right now for listening to me. Uh, but I, like I said, so I work here at Drake um, in Des Moines, Iowa. So just 40 minutes south of Iowa State like Raphael shared. Uh, some quick facts about Drake. We are a small institution, so a small private institution with about 3,000 undergrad students. Uh, that means that our classes are small. Our average class size is 21 students. Our student faculty ratio is 10 to one, uh, but it doesn't limit us in terms of undergraduate programs. We have over a hundred of those and you don't have to choose right away. So you can come in, take some classes, learn and explore we are Division One in athletics. Uh, if anyone caught March Madness lately, we did make it to the first round. Uh, I don't want to talk about after that, but uh, it was great to cheer on the Drake Bulldogs um, and students getting free to all those events. So it's a really great opportunity to cheer on the Bulldogs, get that community pride. Over 140 student organizations, you're going to find that typically on any college campus. So anything you're looking to join, we have and nearly 70% of our students are from outside the state. So coming from Tennessee, we're about eight, eight and a half hour drive from Nashville. Uh, know that uh, we get students from all over, 44 different states and 37 different countries we have represented this year alone. A couple themes that I wanna talk about tonight, uh, and you'll see this first one is personal mentorship. So I touched on it briefly, but Really that student faculty connection, uh, getting to know your professors, getting to know your peers is really important at Drake. And professors are here to help you. They know your name. We don't have any teaching assistants, so professors teach everything. Uh, and um, you don't get to hide, but I say that in a good way. Uh, they're there to care about you and make sure that you're succeeding in your education and going to that next step. Power of community. Also something really big here at Drake. Um, we take pride in 
being in the community of Des Moines, but also Drake's campus. And we have some really cool traditions that uh, include the Drake Relays right there in the middle. So a huge track and field event that is held each year on campus. It starts with the street painting fight. So that photo on the right, you'll see uh, students covered in paint. Um, again, basketball games, football games, um, really anything on campus, but also in the community. We wouldn't be Drake if it wasn't for Des Moines, if that makes sense. It's a fastest growing city in the Midwest. Um, here's a kind of a photo of downtown Des Moines. We're about seven minutes from downtown, so we have a typical campus uh, with green space and beautiful trees and things like that. But you have a whole uh, wealth of opportunity just seven minutes away. Employment growth is big, so internships, professional development, things you might not be thinking of right now, but uh, could be beneficial down in the future uh, is internships. And so out of some other major Midwest cities, Des Moines is the largest at 21% employment growth over the last eight years. So that's pretty incredible uh, to see our flourishing. We have lots of headquarters downtown Des Moines with Drake connections, Drake alums, uh, and students love, you know, getting those opportunities. Known as one of the best places, a best place to live in the US, top 10 best place for business and careers, and a best job market city. Uh, we also really like food here in Des Moines. So there's some photos of some really uh, great restaurants um, as well as a cool scenic view. But if you ever do come up for a visit, we are offering in-person visits. Um, I can give you some good recommendations for food because you can eat your way through Des Moines, no problem. Opportunity to serve. This is also a really big thing at Drake. And I think typically when you think of opportunity to serve, you think in the community. And Drake students are definitely a part of that, whether it be Habitat for, for Humanity, uh, volunteering at a local field shelter downtown, but also opportunity to serve on campus in a leadership position, helping other students. Uh, we have a Boys and Girls Club on campus, and we are one of the third uh, we are one of the we are the third private institution to have a boys and girls club on campus, which is really great. So students can volunteer there, just thirty seconds from their residence hall. Lifetime of value. So uh, private schools, you're going to find a bit higher tuition than maybe those state schools, but know that we work with you and have multiple scholarships and opportunities to make those finances that gap smaller but know that you're gonna graduate and get a job right away. So we survey students six months after graduation each year um, and ask, are they doing what they want? 95.5% of our class from 2020 uh, surveyed back and said, hey, we're in a job, we're doing grad school in a pandemic, which is pretty great. Our, our rate is usually above 98%. So we're really proud of this to have 95.5 in a pandemic. We also have a tuition guarantee, which is something uh, that you won't find in a ton of schools. So definitely ask around when you're looking at colleges, but it basically means your tuition is gonna stay the same all four years that you're in college at Drake. It's good for finances, good for budgets, uh, good for families. A couple of new things going on. So always improving our campus. Uh, we just renovated our dining hall, which is really exciting. We have a soccer stadium in the works with our uh, Des Moines Public Schools. So it'll be shared between Drake and the public high schools. And then the Harkin Institute, which is a public policy institute, uh, got a new look on campus. Right now, it's the current site of COVID-19 vaccines. So a lot of community members are getting their COVID-19 vaccines at the Harkin Institute. Office of Admission. So this is uh, my contact information. Uh, obviously, I am the admission counselor for Tennessee, even though I do live in Des Moines. I travel down to the Nashville area sometimes and would love to connect. So if you do have any questions, I'll drop my contact information in the chat below. But thank you all so much for um, listening and have a great night. Go Bulldogs. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate that very much. Next up, we have a St. Louis University. Hello, all. My name is Ann Kenezetek, and I am a senior admission counselor at St. Louis University. I use the pronoun she, her, hers, and I'm excited to be chatting with you all a little bit more about the university. 
go ahead and share my screen. Awesome. Okay. So if you have never heard of St. Louis University, you know nothing about us, that's okay. We're going to cover some big picture items tonight when it comes to where we are located and just some important overarching facts about who we are as an institution. We are about 8,000 undergrads, so we really view that as medium size. When it comes to medium size, we function in two different ways, feeling a little bit smaller on one end and feeling a little bit larger on the other end. We do have two campuses. So we are located both in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as Madrid, Spain. There are students studying abroad in, in Madrid, Spain for four years and their graduation degree will still say St. Louis University. So both options there for you. It's also a great study abroad location. Being that we were the first university west of the Mississippi, we have a long standing history and we are also Catholic Jesuit. If you're not familiar with the Jesuits, it's an order within the Catholic Church, St. Ignatius of Loyola founded. What that means though, day in and day out is that we believe our students are educated holistically. So we talk about mind, body and spirit. You show up as a whole person and we are going to care for you as a whole person. In that Jesuit education, like I emphasize that holistic education, we're really pushing you to grow and to think critically and potentially critical to how you were raised or the ideas that you're surrounded with at the institution. You're gonna meet people from around the world. We have every single state represented on our campus as well as about 70, a little over 70 countries right now. So coming to SLU, you're gonna interact with individuals that come from very different backgrounds than yourself which is going to push you to grow as a person. When we think about that concept or commitment of service, I really emphasize with my students and try to challenge them to think about it as more than a day of volunteering, rather being and walking alongside those that live and are a part of our community. I've heard one of our Jesuits say it, I believe pretty well, saying it, we're here not just to serve in our soup kitchens, rather we are here to shut the soup kitchens down. So understanding what a root issue is and making a difference that way. If we don't identify as Catholic or even as Christian, that's okay. Not every single student on our campus will. You and part of our Jesuit tradition, we welcome students of all faiths as well as students who may not identify with any form of a faith. That is okay. That is something that we do welcome and encourage on campus. Coming to university, of course you wanna get an education. That is an important piece is, is my major listed here? Is it an option? Can I explore? What does that look like? At St. Louis University, we have almost 90 different majors to choose from and it's fairly wide ranging. So we have nursing, there is engineering, there is physical therapy, there is health information management, there's social work, criminology and criminal justice, public health, biology, chemistry, education, theater, business, so many different ranges, flight science, you can become a professional pilot on our campus. Really that means that we are very expansive and so if you are still exploring or still deciding, you are still deciding. You're not undecided. You are 16, 17, 18 years old. You don't have to have your life figured out yet. That is okay. You can be still deciding in a college or a school or still deciding overall. And that is a very feasible option to do. It is okay if you don't know what you want to do with the rest of your life. It's also okay to change your major within a college or university. So emphasizing all of those pieces to it, and having a lot of different majors on our campus then allows for you to name your areas of interest and kind of explore and take classes within those different areas before you decide on that specific major. Our students are very involved and engaged on campus in a lot of different ways. So it could be being a division one athlete, our club sports, our intramural sports, having over 150 different student organizations, there's Greek life on campus and in the local St. Louis area. So there are so many different ways to get involved and hone in and practice those leadership skills of leading your peers, supervising your peers, or so many different ways, hosting a job or having a job on campus, research opportunities, you will be involved in some fashion of your areas and your passions. 
In terms of application process, it's fairly straightforward. You can apply through our website or the common application. We don't have a preference. We do require official transcripts. If you are an international student living here in the US, you would work with your specific state counselor. If you are an international student who is outside of the United States, you would work with our international counselor with some English proficiency pieces to it. And then optional are ACT or SAT. And that means optional for admission, for scholarship, and for honors and scholars programs. If you don't feel like they reflect you, that is okay. You don't have to send those in to be reviewed for any of those programs. And we're in a three-year pilot program. So fall 2022 and fall 2023 will also be a part of this. I know I just shared a lot of information with you all. So if you ever have questions or need anything, I work with all of the students from the state of Tennessee, no matter where you'd be coming from, find my contact information on the website and I'm always happy to help. Thanks so much, Ann, appreciate that. Uh, next up, we have Missouri Southern State University. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well this evening. I am Ashlyn Bradley. I am the admissions counselor in the Southern Missouri area as well as the state of Tennessee. Um, I'm not sure that very many of you have probably traveled to Joplin, but it is about six hours away from Memphis and 10 and a half from Knoxville. A little bit about Joplin to begin with. Um, we are the fourth largest metropolitan area in Missouri. It is located on Route 66. There's about 50,000 people in Joplin, but we have quite a few surrounding communities that create a melting pot for the area. Um, we have a variety of restaurants, um, local and chain, and there is over 900 acres of trails and outdoor area where you can go hiking, um, visit our grasslands, as well as the falls pictured here on this slide. One of the things I like to mention about Joplin is we have a third Thursday during the summer and the spring where local vendors um, and local shops can bring their products out to our main street that's completely closed for that evening and show the community what they have to offer. So this is a great opportunity to communicate with new people, um, look for jobs and opportunities to get involved in the community. So why go to Missouri Southern? One of the great things about our campus is there's a lot of things to do and a lot of ways for students to get involved. We offer intramural sports, Greek life, our homecoming parade is one of our biggest events on campus each year. Uh, we have over 70 student organizations. So whether you are involved in diversity, uh, religious practices, whatever your major is, we more than likely have a student organization or club for you to get involved with. And the great thing is if we don't offer it, you can create it yourself. And we'd be happy to allow more students on campus to get exposed to things that you're interested in as well. We do offer local discounts for our students. So one of these discounts includes free McAllister's tea if you like McAllister's. Um, you can also get discounts at local shops and at the mall. You can also get into all of our athletic events for free. And we are NCAA Division II with over 15 different sports teams. I also like to mention our career services office that's offered to our current students as well as alumni. This provides an opportunity for students to get their resume looked over. You can also do a mock interview and they will help you apply for internships and jobs, whether it's on campus or off campus. And this is to you when you're a student and after you graduate. Something else that I love about our campus is our international mission. We have students who study abroad. We have international students, but our school mission is to have students be more immersed in cultures other than our own. So we actually provide additional scholarships for students who are interested in studying abroad. A few facts about our class sizes in campus. We do have about 25 to 30 students in the average class size. We do like to keep these classes small because we 
emphasize the hands-on learning aspects on our campus, as well as having a very good communication and rapport with your professors. That way you can ask them questions and feel comfortable having face-to-face -face interactions during these uncertain times. Uh, our professors know you by name. They know each student in their class. So we love our small class sizes. We do have a 95% acceptance rate. This means we do have specific admissions requirements, but we have them low enough where a majority of students can get access to an education. Uh, we do accept students that sometimes don't meet our acceptance policy, but that's because we want students to be able to get an education at an affordable cost. There are a little under 6,000 students currently enrolled from 48 countries and 42 different states. As I mentioned, we do have 15 Division II NCAA teams and over 70 student organizations to get involved with on campus. The great thing about Missouri Southern is that we offer in-state tuition to all of the states pictured here, including Tennessee. You also have access to university and academic scholarships in addition to this in-state tuition. So our tuition rate is one of the most affordable in the state of Missouri and the four state region. I like to mention this because getting an affordable education and getting a degree that you are excited to seek is so important. This is a breakdown of what our in-state tuition on campus looks like. We do highly suggest our first time freshmen live on campus. Uh, it is statistically proven that students that live on campus, their first year as a freshman do better in school. Uh, you also have access to all of the, the areas on campus and you're right there. So you don't have to fight for parking and you can meet new people and get involved a lot easier. We do have zero fees. So our tuition is very straightforward. All of the campus utilities, all of the um, student, the buildings where students can go and play video games or get involved, they have access to that right there. And it's for free. Here is a list of our scholarships that we currently implemented. It is based off of ACT and GPA scores. And we do have an honors program. We do offer a few more competitive scholarships through performance-based scholarships, foundation scholarships, and athletics. We have over 140 majors to choose from through certificate programs, associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, and master's degrees. Here are a few of these options. Here are some of our other degree programs. Um, our business department is one of the biggest on campus, so a lot of students are involved in that. And some of our unique programs. We have an advanced medical program ex or acceptance program. Uh, so students who apply as a freshman can get accepted into med school through Missouri Southern and Kansas City University. Uh, we have healthcare administration and a bachelor's of EMT and paramedic. Here's a list of our athletics teams for men and women. Ashlyn, we need to move on. Do you okay. want to share your information, your contact information? Perfect. Yes. These are just the slides about the admissions requirements. We are allowing visitors on campus. And here is my contact information. Perfect. Thanks so Thank much. You I so appreciate much. that. Uh, next up, we have Missouri University Science and Technology. Hey, Cara, we can't hear you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Kara Winars, and I am a senior admissions counselor at Missouri s and uh, Missouri s and is located in Rolla, Missouri, which is halfway between uh, Springfield and St. Louis. There we go. 
And uh, we have a total enrollment of about 7,600 students. And there is about 20,000 people who live in the town of Rolla. So it's a small community, uh, but there's about 50,000 in the surrounding area for shopping, dining, entertainment. Rolla is part of the South Center Ozarks Highlands. So you'll be able to find many lakes, rivers, streams. Uh, people enjoy fishing, swimming, canoeing, kayaking, rafting, camping, and a lot of other outdoor activities. There's caves to explore, zip lines to maneuver, and over 300 acres of city parks with 10 miles of walking and biking trails. And Rolla has a nice balance of urban development with still that small town charm. So you'll be able to find everything that you need here. Of course, we're always happy to share our rankings. And of course, you can find more online. A couple of my favorites aren't even listed on here. Uh, for, for instance, Forbes top 25 STEM schools and Lumosity's top 25 America's brainiest colleges. I encourage you to take a look and see at the other universities also on these lists, but we're in very good company. And we, of course, we have two colleges at Missouri s and and our first college is College of Arts, Science, and Businesses. In the fall of 2020, uh, we had over 7,600 students from across the United States and around the world who chose to study at Missouri s and and about 6,100 of those students are undergrads and 1,500 graduate students. We have a student faculty ratio of 18 to 1, and the average class size is less than 30 students. s and offers 99 degree programs in 40 different areas of study. And as you can see in the College of Arts, Science, and Business, we have sciences like biology, chemistry, and physics, humanities and liberal arts, an AACSB accredited undergraduate business program, teacher certification, pre-professional programs such as pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law. And we also have a direct entry program into the St. Louis College of Pharmacy program for students interested in that. But we are, however, mostly well known for our engineering programs. And with about 75% of our students majoring in STEM degrees here at s and it's a very popular program. In the College of Engineering and Computing, we have 15 different types of undergraduate engineering majors, as well as computer science, geology, and geophysics. In the fall of 2020, we introduced a brand new global engineering program where students can earn two bachelor's degrees in five years, a BS in the engineering field of their choice, and a BA in interdisciplinary studies with a minor in Spanish or French. And in addition to a traditional uh, semester studying abroad, they'll do an additional semester internship abroad. So we're really happy to start this new program. And s and offers several unique engineering minors, including biomedical engineering, explosive engineering, and humanitarian engineering. We also have focused research in several areas and undergraduates can participate in research as early as their freshman year, which is very, very important in those STEM fields. So you may be wondering what students at s and s and do besides study? Well, we have over 250 student organizations and clubs to get involved with. One of our popular uh, organizations are our student design teams. We have 19 student design teams that give students the opportunity to develop their problem solving, teamwork, and business skills while designing and building race cars, robots, rockets, cement canoes, concrete canoes, uh, rovers, drones, you name it. These students are building solar houses and competing nationally and internationally against other universities in these divisions. s and has 15 NCAA Division II varsity athletic teams. And we also have a variety of intramural and club sports such as disc golf and rugby. About 23% of students participate in Greek life, and we have theater, band, orchestra, study abroad, and many, many more. Missouri s and has two career fairs each year, which are among the largest in the Midwest. Last year, over 4,000 different employers actively recruited s and students at career fairs, on-campus events, and online through our job portal. The average starting salary for students graduating with a bachelor's degree is over 76, no, $67,000 a year. And students doing internships and co-ops can also earn on average over $3,300 per month while they're participating in those opportunities. And our s and students go to work for many of the Fortune 500 companies that you're familiar with across the nation. 
So if you're ready to apply to, for admission to Missouri s and we are still accepting applications for fall 2021. And students can apply test optional this year. And we will also offer test optional as an option for students for the class of 2022 or the fall of 2022. Um, we also waive all application fees, so it's free to apply to Missouri s and either through our own application or through the Common App. And for younger students out there, you can apply during the summer following your junior year and uh, throughout your senior year, of course, and you'll need to submit your high school transcripts and your ACT or SAT scores if you choose. <clears throat> and then you'll be notified of a decision within a few weeks. s and is very affordable and we offer excellent merit-based scholarships. Our most prestigious scholarship for out-of-state students is the Distinguished Scholar Award. It's a competitive scholarship for $30,000 a year and is renewable for four years. We also have additional scholarships that students can apply for once they're admitted to Missouri s &T. And of course, we're always here to help. So feel free to reach out to myself or any of my colleagues in the office. We're always happy to help. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kara. Appreciate that. So before we wrap up this evening, I want to invite all the, the panelists back on screen here. And I thought we would uh, wrap up with a question about what is their favorite event or tradition on their campus? So we will go in order of presentation. Uh, so Raphael, what would you say about Iowa State? I think my favorite event would definitely be the Destination Iowa State, which is an event that we host at the beginning of every semester. And it is kind of just a huge imagined picnic kind of outdoor festival that we hold on center campus where all 900 clubs and organizations get together, have free food, um, live music, kind of just a place for all of our students to get to know what's available for them at Iowa State. It was definitely a little bit different due to COVID, but we were still able to manage and made sure those students were felt comfortable and knew what was available to them. Very fun. Uh, Megan, what about Drake University? All right, Jeff, you challenged me to come up with something different from the Drake Relays, but I have to talk a bit about them. Uh, I mentioned briefly in our presentation, but it's a huge track and field event on campus held every April. Uh, we welcome over 40,000 people. We have high schools from around Iowa, colleges from across the country, and then Olympians, which is really cool. So I've seen the world record for the mile be broken just casually on a Wednesday night. Uh, it includes a whole week of festivities, basically a homecoming for Drake. And uh, it's broadcast over across the country. So if you turn on ESPN or something during the third week of April, uh, you'll probably hear about the Drake Relays. Um, along with that, the beautiful Bulldog Contest is something I need to talk about real quick. Back here is Griff, uh, our live mascot. He's a real Bulldog and he hosts a beautiful Bulldog Contest each uh, year. And, and one Bulldog is crowned the most beautiful. He gets to wear a crown around campus and uh, brings a lot of joy. So. Hopefully students can experience that sometime. Very fun, very fun. Uh, and what about St. Louis University? On St. Louis University's campus, we have a lot of fountains and any other time of the year, you would be fined heavily for jumping in the fountains. But on graduation day, everyone is in the fountain taking pictures. It's just a lot of fun to step your feet in the water and kind of just slides and it's okay and that's okay for one day. So to have your cap and gown picture with all of your friends on graduation day in that fountain that you've always wanted to go in and have not gone in yet is just a lot of fun. Very fun. Ashlyn, what do you think about uh, Missouri, uh, excuse me, Missouri Southern State? So my favorite thing on campus each year would probably be our picnic. So obviously it looks a little bit different with COVID, but during the week of the, or during the day of the picnic, we have vendors come in that provide students with free swag. Some of our previous vendors have brought in makeup. We have stuff a lion. We have free food. Uh, it's just a day for everyone to get outside and enjoy our beautiful campus and get a little bit more information on kind of what the campus has to offer and the clubs and organizations, but you also get a ton of free stuff. So who doesn't like free stuff? I mean, let's be honest, everybody, I do just about anything for a free t-shirt. So getting all this free swag and being able to stuff a lion, it's really cool. 
Very fun. And then, Kara, what about uh, Missouri S&T, as you like to call it? Well, I think my colleagues here from Missouri would probably tell you that they think that probably St. Patrick's Day is the biggest deal that happens at S&T. It is renowned in the state of Missouri. And mm -hmm. They, students do get two days off classes to participate. It's called spring recess. It's a week and a half before spring break. And uh, yeah, uh, it's a 10 day extravaganza of all things St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick is the patron saint of engineers. It's not just an s &T thing. He is the patron saint of engineers uh, and we celebrate him uh, very well. But it's not my favorite thing. My favorite thing would be the career fairs that we have and, and also, if you like free things, you get a lot of cool free things from all the big name companies who come for our students. Uh, we do this twice a year. Uh, it really, we bring these opportunities to the students so they don't have to go out and look for it themselves. And leading up to these career fairs, the students have the opportunity to take advantage of coaching on their resumes, um, the uh, elevator pitch. Uh, they even have a, a coat closet, a suit closet for students who need a piece or a whole wardrobe to make sure they feel confident for those interviews that we have. Uh, and it's a big deal. Uh, we have a lot of companies who come and they'll camp out for a whole week and throw barbecues on campus for the students and really allow the students to find out more about what kind of careers are available for them. So. Very fun. Well, I wanna thank you all for attending this evening. I certainly wanna thank our panelists for their presentation. Um, if you're interested, this has been recorded. You can certainly share it with friends and family down the road. There will be another session tomorrow evening as well, if you'd like to hear from other universities. On behalf of StriveScan and the five schools, thanks for joining us. Have a great night, stay safe, and good luck with your college choice. Bye everybody, take care. <laughs>